This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Did you know that Navier-Stokes equations are partial differential equations? In physics, the Navier-Stokes equations are partial differential equations which describe the motion of viscous fluid substances named after the French engineer and physicist Claude Louis Navier and Anglo-Irish physicist and mathematician George Gabriel Stokes. They were developed over several decades of progressively building the theories from 1822 Navier to 1842 to 1850 the Stokes. The Navier-Stokes equations mathematically express conservation of momentum and conservation of mass from Newtonian fluids. They are sometimes accompanied by an equation of state relating pressure, temperature, and density. They arise from applying Isaac Newton's second law to fluid motion, together with the assumption that the stress in the fluid is the sum of a diffusing viscous term proportional to the gradient, proportional to the gradient of velocity and pressure term, hence describing viscous flow. The difference between them and a closely related Euler equations is the Navier-Stokes equations take viscosity into account while Euler equations model only in viscid flow. As a result, the Navier-Stokes are a parabolic equation and therefore have better analytic properties at the expense of having less mathematical structure. For instance, they, they are never completely integrable. The Navier-Stokes equations are useful because they describe the physics of many phenomena of scientific and engineering interest. They may be used to model the weather, ocean currents, water flow in a pipe, and air flow around a wing. The Navier-Stokes equation in their full and simplified form help with the design of aircraft and cars, the study of blood flow, the design of power stations the analysis of pollution, and many other things. Coupled with Maxwell's equation, they can be used to model and study magnetohydrodynamics. The Navier-Stokes equations are also of great interest in a purely mathematical sense. Despite their wide range of practical uses, it has not, yet, it has not yet been proven whether smooth solutions always exist, exist in three dimensions. That is whether they are infinitely differentiable or even just bounded at all points in the domain. This is called the Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness problem. The solution of the equations is a flow velocity. It is a factor field to every point in a fluid at any moment in a time interval. It gives a factor whose direction and magnitude are those of the velocity of the fluid at that point in space and at that moment in time. It is usually studied in three spatial dimensions and one time dimension, although two spatial dimensional and steady state cases are often used as models. And higher dimensional analogs are studied in both pure and applied mathematics. Once the velocity field is calculated, other quantities of interest such as pressure or temperature may be found using dynamical equations and relations. This is different from what one normally sees in classical mechanics where solutions are typical trajectories of position of a particle or deflection of a continuum. Studying velocity instead of position makes more sense for a fluid, although for visualization purposes, one can compute various trajectories. In particular, the streamlines of a vector field interpreted as flow velocity are paths along which a massless fluid particle travel. These paths are the integral curves whose derivative at each point is called the vector field, and they can represent visually the behavior of the vector will end at a point in time. The Navier-Stokes momentum equation can be derived as a particular form of the Cauchy momentum equation.
whose general co- convective form is u on dt is equal to 1 on rho del and sigma plus g. By the thing, the Kauji stress tensor sigma to be the sum of a viscosity term tau, the elevatoric stress, and pressure term pi, volumetric stress, we arrive at the Kauji momentum equation, at least convective form, rho du on dt is equivalent to negative del p plus del tau plus rho g where d on dt is the material derivative defined as partial on partial t plus u dot u dot del rho is the density u is the flow velocity del dot is the divergence p is the pressure t is term tau is the deviatoric stress tensor which has a 2 g represents body accelerations acting on the continuum for example gravity natural accelerations electrostatic accelerations and so on in this form it is apparent that in the assumption of an inviscid fluid no deviatoric stress koji equations reduce to Euler equations assuming conservation of mass we can use the mass continuity equation or simply continuity equation partial rho on partial t plus del dot Rho u is equivalent to zero to arrive at the conservation form of the equations of motion. This is shown Kauchi momentum equation conservation form partial on partial t rho u plus del dot rho u cross u is equivalent to negative del p plus del dot tau plus rho g as shown where that o term the cross is the outer product the left side of the equation becomes acceleration and may be composed of time dependent and convective components also the effects of non inertial coordinates if present the right side of the equation is in effect a summation of hydrostatic effects the divergence of the vectoric stress and body forces such as gravity all non-relativistic balance equations, such as the Navier-Stokes equation, can be derived by beginning with the Koch equations and specifying the stress. The stress tends to through a constitutive relation. By expressing the deviatoric shear stress tends in terms of viscosity and fluid velocity gradient, and assuming constant viscosity, the Koch equations we have seen will lead to Navier-Stokes equations. Significant feature of the Koch equation and consequently all other continuum equations including Euler and Navier-Stokes is the presence of convective acceleration, the effect of acceleration of a flow with respect to space. While individual fluid particles indeed experience time dependent acceleration, the convective acceleration of the flow field is a special effect. One example being fluid speeding up in a nozzle. It is worth pointing here that the coach stress tensor is denoted sigma instead of tau as it was in general or continuum equation and in incompressible flow as we have seen. The compressible momentum, just remember that, keep in mind, the compressible momentum in a Stokes equation resolved from the assumptions on the Kauji stress tensor. 1. The stress is a Galilean invariant. It does not depend directly on the flow velocity but only on special derivatives of the flow velocity. So the stress variable is the tensor gradient del u. 2. The stress tensor is linear in this variable. Sigma del u is equivalent to c del u where c is the fourth order tensor representing the constant of proportionality called the viscosity or elasticity tensor and thus full colon is the double dot product 3 the fluid is assumed to be isotropic as with gases and simple liquids and consequently v is an isotropic tensor furthermore since the stress tensor is symmetric 
by Helmholtz decomposition, it can be expressed in terms of two scalar lamb parameters. The second viscosity, lambda, and the dynamic viscosity, mu, as it is usually in linear elasticity. So square educational premium is a section of physical educationals with content that is not hosted here. There are episodes ranging from long to short videos. Remember those good old shots of ours? They are there. So do we get there? Use the link on screen or in the description or in the pinned comment below. Enjoy yourself. Now we'll see you in the next episode of Cisco Educationals. Yeah.